Hello everyone. Welcome to Infosec Train. So my name is Trish. So today we are going to discuss about some changes happening to the CCSP examination. So a few months back that IC Square has uh, informed that there is a lot of changes happening to the CCSP examination starting from this August 2022. In fact, they are changing the exam duration and the number of questions and all. Also, they have added some topics uh, to every domain of the CCSP examination. So we are going to discuss about the major changes happening to the topics in the domain one of the CCSP examination. So I'm Krish. So for more information about my profile, you can check my LinkedIn. So let's start now team. So we will discuss, you're going to discuss about the domain one that is the cloud concepts, architecture and design. So uh, the updated curriculum for the CCSP exam is actually available in the website. You can check this actually. So you can see the effective date is from August 1st, 2022. And in this first domain, there are a few topics which they have added uh, from the previous curriculum. That is like they have added topics like the conferential computing, Davis Ops, DevOps security, security hygiene, and this cloud design patterns, etc. So we'll have a uh, two videos for this domain one. So the first part I'll be covering this two topics called as confidential computing and DevSecOps. So you may feel like DevSecOps was, was already there in the previous curriculum, like, but still they have uh, improved something. They have some do some do done some reshuffling on that particular topic. So first of all, team, we will discuss about what exactly is a confidential computing. So first point is that why do we have to learn this? The reason is that team, when talking about cloud computing, like when talking about Amazon or Azure or any kind of cloud computing strategy, one key point is that encryption plays a key role, right? When you go to a cloud platform, encryption plays a key role. And we know that there are many technologies in the cloud platform for encrypting data. And it's not new technology for cloud computing. Like for over the years, we have been using this uh, encryption for data at rest or data in transit. But at the same time, when talking about a concept called as data in use, okay, when talking about a concept called as data in use, the biggest problem is that it is the biggest challenge we have over the years when talking about the security of your data. So normally what happens is that team, let's assume that we have a data which is basically there near a storage device. Let's say in your hard disk or SSD, we have some data. So this data we have inside our hard disk or SSD or any kind of storage devices, we are encrypting this data or application while it's in rest. That is why it isn't stored in some kind of storage devices. But the same time, when this data is actually open for processing, like for example, if an application want to process this data, what we do? This application has to uh, load this data to the computer memory. And basically what happens before the application can process the data, it has to go through the decryption in the memory. So because the data is, at least for a moment, it is unencrypted, it is left exposed. So it can be accessed encryption free right before or during or after it has been processed. So this is a very common uh, attack. Like it's a very common threat we have like, uh, we have something called as a memory dump attack, etc. So basically what happens? So to avoid these kind of challenges, like this is a very important challenge which attackers are using, or it's actually a very common threat for uh, most of cloud computing as well as on-premise also. So that is why we have a technology called as cloud confidential computing, which is focused on this data in use. So it's actually a very interesting technology. That means that let's say we have an application which is specifically accessing a data. So what we do that our data is loaded to the CPU. So we have a microprocessor here. Okay. So basically what happens is that the data is actually loaded to the RAM and then to the microprocessor. So basically what happens is that in the microprocessor, we have something called as a TEE or trusted execution environment. So what happens team? The TEE or trusted execution environment is a secure coprocessor inside the CPU. And what happens that the TE is only accessible to the application code authorized for using it. Okay, the TE is only accessible for the application that is authorized for using it. That means that if there is any other application or any other user or anything else, if try to access the data inside that particular TE or inside that particular execution environment, it will deny the attempt to access and cancel the computation. 
So basically what happens, this actually allows the sensitive data to stay protected while inside the memory and CPU. Okay, so the application can tell the TE when to decrypt the data, when the data must be released for processing and uh, once the data is actually decrypted and processed by the computer, it is invisible to everything and everyone else. So basically what happens, it can include the cloud service provider, it can include other computing resources, it can include the hypervisor, the virtual machines and even the operating system. So that is why this TE actually is a major technology for the cloud computing platform. In fact, if you basically search in uh, Google uh, regarding the TE things used by Google or I mean GCP or Azure, etc., they have been using specialized uh, instances or specialized VMs, which is working using this particular confidential computing technology. So it's a very most important technology team. So don't forget uh, the TE is specifically used for protecting data in use. Normally what we do is that we have different mechanisms for protecting data at rest, data in transit or motion, etc. But if you go for data in use, the TE is an effective infrastructure mechanism. When you use a confidential computing, it basically creates a TEE or trusted execution environment where the application uh, who is allowed or authorized for processing the data only will be able to access. Okay, so that's about the confidential computing team. And just to add one more point, we have a concept called as a TPM, that is Trusted Platform Module. So many people ask me that, so, uh, Sukresh, actually, uh, the TPM is also a technology for uh, main securing your access. So TPM is a specialized secure separate hardware chip. Okay, in your computer, the TPM is a separate hardware chip. Even if it's part of your computer, it acts as a separate computer or se separate, you know, uh, crypto processor. So when you go for a confidential computing, it is actually the part of your microprocessor, but physically separate from the other components. It's actually a completely isolated environment inside your microprocessor itself. So that's about the confidential computing team. Then we have a concept called as a DevSecOps. So DevOps is, a, you know, like for the last uh, five, six years, this word is the hottest in the market. You know DevOps, right? It's basically there. Like we want to have a complete uh, culture or complete strategy for ensuring the whole process of continuous integration and continuous delivery. That means from the point we are collecting an application requirement for developing an application, we collect the requirements to delivering the application. We follow a proper cycle of process to ensure that the agile methodology and those kind of mechanisms can work in a more tuned effective way. That is what we call as DevOps and we have discussed a lot about it. But when you say DevSecOps, the concept is really simple. The goal of DevSecOps is to seamlessly integrate security into the CI CD pipeline. See, either if you go for a pre-production, like let's say Dev, or if you go for a production, that is a operations. So basically what happens, the goal is to ensure the security is basically integrated from the point of developing, to testing, to deploying, to updating, to patching. In every level, we want to integrate security to ensure the software quality and software security hygiene is properly met. And what do you mean by security? See, the security refers to all the tools and techniques needed to design and build a software that can resist attack, that can detect and respond to defects as quickly as possible. Plus, they want to make sure the software is free from any kind of vulnerabilities and any kind of threats which can enter while we the application is being developed. See, normally what we do, we have an application which is basically uh, developed and once the development is complete, then we will do a security testing for the application. Then after that, basically what happens, we have our operations. Once the application is deployed, do a, we do a VAPT. So the security is there, but still, you know, scattered around some point. Plus what happens, we have a separate team doing all these operations. But this approach can basically bring a lot of glitches and a lot of threats in between the whole process. So by making the application security as a part of the unified DevSecOps process from the initial design to the eventual implementation or this organizations can align to the key security aspects of the software strategy. And even talking about DevOps, see, there are many factors like, for example, from the point of doing the code while uh, like I can give you some example for DevSecOps. For example, let's say uh, we have we are deploying some containers. So I want to make sure that I can integrate some security scanners as a part of the containers. So when I do a continuous integration, I want to make sure I can automate the security testing in the CI process. 
and I can add some automated tests for security capabilities into the acceptance test process. Also, I can make sure I can do a proper automatic security patching like uh, maybe for some vulnerabilities and all. Like this, in every process and every phase, we integrate security. Okay, that is what we call as a DevSecOps. So it's not different from the traditional DevOps. We are having the same DevOps, but we ensure that we integrate the security in every aspect and every steps of the, the whole DevOps process. That's actually what we call as a DevSecOps. So one more question that people more ask is that Sukrish, uh, in the examination of cu curriculum, we are seeing two words called as DevSecOps and DevOps security. So usually these words are used synonymously, but still basically I'll give you a small difference. DevSecOps is basically talking about the application security. That means I'm talking about integrating security in every piece and part of that particular whole SDLC process to secure the application. And DevOps security is talking about the security of the tools we use in DevOps. Like for example, we use a lot of tools like Docker, Kubernetes, Jenkins, Ansible, Chef, Puppet, Maven. So integrating the security into these tools to a better strategy is what we call as a DevOps security. But of course, yes, if you basically Google it, you will see both of them are almost the same only. So that's about this lecture team. In the next lecture, in the part two of this CCSP domain one video, I'll be discussing about the rest of the new topics which is added to the curriculum. Thank you so much team. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. Signing off, Chris.